Sksakh, commonly anglicised Uksak, is a very old language. In technical terms, it came into existence back in the very early years of the Paleocene, just after the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event. However, it spent several hundred thousand years in status after the Ustsur, again anglicised to Utsa, were overthrown by a servant species of their own creation and banished to the dimension of Khsch, a name even harder to anglicise, so in general scholars will just call the world Deranor, from the Makwar word for the world, Deranor. Providing this information is our main source, Usatyik, an Utsa scholar who agreed to an interview with us. Uksark is written using the Tsk script, although it's often converted into the Makwar alphabet. Satyik is an abjad, meaning only the consonants are written and, given Uksark's propensity for massive consonant clusters, needing a way to make the vowels clear is pretty rare, and the most common strategy for doing it is to simply insert vowel letters from the Makwar alphabet. Back before the banishing, Uksark had a different far more complicated and primarily logographic script. The complexity of this script led to it only really being learned by those assigned roles where writing is important at birth. Moving into Derenor, specifically the largest area, less than a third of the Utsa even spoke Xark fluently, despite it being the closest thing to a lingua franca, and virtually no one knew how to write it. Even some of the loose coalition of generals holding the settlement together through sheer force of will couldn't write in it. As such, the generals assigned a small group of scholars the task of making a new, very easy writing system for communication. At the time, Xark's phonology was quite simple, a row of pulmonic stops, t, T, we'll get back to that one. K, 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 E. Five adjectives, t, t, k, 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 and four fricatives. <laughs> from this, the scholars distinguished five positions in the mouth from front to back, creating symbols to identify where each sound was, with the glottal stop treated its own thing as it blocks the throat. Creating an adjective was seen as more or less the same as a normal stop but with the airway blocked, hence the symbol for the glottal stop was drawn through the pulmonic consonant. Finally, fricatives were more open and hence the glottal stop was separated from the consonants by putting it below them. As vowels weren't that significant in Uxark, and most of the scholars' native writing systems didn't write them, they didn't really see the vowel sounds as more than filler between consonants, so didn't write them. While these symbols look quite hefty to write, to an Utsar at the time they were remarkably simple. Carving information about a location onto local trees was a tradition in a lot of Utsar cultures, and considered especially important in the New World. Additionally, it was common to cast a basic spell on any type of paper to make the claws of an Utsar write on it like a pen. The combination of these led to the scholars prioritising the ability to write the words with claws, and since the Utsar have three fingers and a thumb, they could carve any of these symbols with a single hand motion. The basic spellings and positions of the letters used initially continued on until the modern day. However, at one point, when the distinction between sibilant fricatives and non-sibilant fricatives became a contrastive feature, it became common to mark the distinction with a simple downwards line on the fricative letter to sibilantize it. No other spelling reforms have been made to the language, giving the language a somewhat difficult spelling system, where lots of sounds can be written in more than one way, and there's absolutely no way to determine which letter to use. So could you show us how you write now that claw paper has gone out of use? Returning to the pronunciation of Uxark, the modern form has the following consonants t, t, y, k, k, e, s, sh, s, sh, y, h, h, t, y. 
and the vowels e, u, a, r. The various differences in the anatomy of humans and utsa led to a number of odd differences in pronunciation when compared to humans. The lack of lips presents the creation of both labial consonants, like p, and rounded vowels, like u. Likewise, their extended jaws and differently shaped tongues give sibilant consonants a greater distinction from non-sibilant ones, like s from f, making it a very common distinction in fricatives for its uh, languages. And it also allows for a greater difference in what we would describe as alveolar stops and post-alveolar stops in the mouth of the human, t and t. Human speakers of Ixark tend to replace the further back t with a retroflex t to make the distinction clear. Utsa languages are also notable for having, on average, far more and longer consonant clusters than in human languages, as well as a generally lower rate of phonological shift. Could you explain where your name comes from? Ah, ah, Usitik is the Uxark for something along the lines of Priest of Claws or perhaps Priest of Slashing, while Usitikta extends the meaning to be Priest of Thoughtful Slashing or perhaps Wise Claws. The forming of names, like other nouns in Uxark, consists of a classifier word followed by a type of word that can function as either a noun or a verb depending entirely on its context, and then further followed by any adjectives. Some of these combinations have designated meanings that are often quite separate from the classifier and nouns themselves, like tithas, which literally means year smell, but refers to the smell of rotting eggs as derived back from before proper magical plumbing and disposal was invented, when the new year, occurring at the end of the mating season, would herald both a new, highly numerically controlled wave of children and hundreds of unfertilized eggs which wouldn't be eaten on principle. In contrast, some other combinations, like tsa literally tsa language, refers to any language native to the utsa. There are also some cases where multiple classifiers are used, like tsa-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch, meaning year of the land of the tsa which refers to one year on the planet Earth, or classifiers that can be used in noun position, like ksh, meaning professional, which can then be used in both positions to make the word referring to a boring aristocratic type. In addition to the classifier and noun root, nouns also receive a case and plural marker. Utsa are considerably more mathematically minded than humans, especially when it comes to fast addition to help with the large field of superior vision they have to that of humans. As such, Uxark has a far more complex plurality system than almost any human language. Plurality is turned into a prefix, and in its earlier form could put a noun in the singular, dual, trial, or quadral for specific numbers, as well as a negative form for none of a thing. Negative forms for a lack of a thing are also a very common trait in its languages. Alternatively, a more generic palcal, greater palcal, or plural form, which also refers to the totality of a thing, can be used. This system has been somewhat simplified in recent times, when ordinary sound shifts have rendered the dual and trial forms identical as s. A distinction still exists in spelling, but outside of very upper-class circles, most speakers use s as a sort of lesser palcal, using the dual spelling, and the quadral form has mostly fallen out of use. A noun's case comes as a suffix after the adjectives describing a noun, and there are separate forms for the subject of an intransitive verb, the agent of a transitive verb, and the patient of one giving Uxark a tripartite morphosyntactic alignment. There are also a series of separate appositional words which can either replace the suffix or come before the word, depending on whether the word forms a new clause, and a set of copula suffixes for being and becoming, as well as having and getting, which are placed on nouns in copula phrases. So to say, I am an Uxur, you would say or I subject Uxur B. Although that alone would sound a bit off without an evidential particle at the start. What exactly is an evidential particle? Uxark is notable for having evidential particles which take a person, so the third person witness particle could function the same as a first person reportative if you already know who you're talking about, as well as three forms of the imperative as alternatives to normal evidentials, an encouraging imperative, an imperative which stresses the importance of an action, and one to give a direct order, which is rarely used outside of the military, and is seen as quite rude. 
There is also a distinction between something witnessed up close where you've sensed it with more than just eyesight, and one from far away, as the superior eyesight of the Utsur makes seeing distant things without any context very common. And as such, this particular evidential is also used for other occurrences of having witnessed something without context. Other than the evidential particles, verbs are rather straightforward with the word order. Evidential, subject, verb, any adverbs, and then the object if there is one. Tense and aspect are almost always taken from context. There are some adverbs which get the idea across, but it's more common to forgo marking the verb entirely and say something more along the lines of, in the future, I see you and you buy me a loaf of bread, instead of I am going to see you and you will buy me a loaf of bread. And that's Xark in a nutshell. If you want to learn more about the Xark language, please contact the Ministry of Interdimensional Linguistics. And now, the Xanathene Air Conditioner, a miracle of engineering, or just a load of hot air, or panoramic thing. So this video was a bit out there. I wasn't really sure on how to give a Conlang presentation that wasn't just like, Hey, this is the language, here's how X works, here's Y, yada da da da. But then I saw a light-hearted nature documentary and I was like, Hey, I could do that. I wanted a bit more interview stuff, but then I realised it takes about 15 attempts to get my Xark pronunciation right. Uh, the consonant clusters can get pretty impenetrable at times, although, fun fact, still nothing compared to some human languages, like New Holt, with this monster of a word, meaning that he had in his possession a bushberry plant. But anyway, before I start rambling off linguistics facts for hours, thank you for watching, and good night.